Good morning. It is wonderful to see you this morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, to worship him just by showing up. Do you know what I mean? Just showing up is an act of worship. But more than that, by being in his presence and by saying to him, Lord, during this hour, I want to surrender myself to you and I'm asking you to let your Holy Spirit come upon my mind and my body, bring healing to my thoughts, to my body. Help me to be in tune with your Holy Spirit. Help me to be in tune with that which is heavenly and divine. That's really good, isn't it? Yeah. Today's a special day because today is Confirmation Sunday. So uh, today, we're going to welcome these young people into the fellowship of this church as full members. That's a big deal. Can, can you give a big round of applause for them? We want to welcome everybody who's here uh, with them, probably parents, grandparents, friends, uncles, aunts. That's a, a wonderful thing. I uh, want to also welcome those of you that are visiting from far away that aren't connected with the Confirmands. Uh, a warm welcome to you. Glad to have everybody. Would you please register your attendance on the little blue pads that are closest to the aisle? And then once you take all the room you need to write legibly, pass it down so the people on the ends can have a chance. Thank you for doing that. I have sanctified clipboards for you. If you will ush at the 930 service, then here's the clipboard for you to sign up for that. You're excluded from ushing at the 930 because you're an important 8 o'clock person. <laughs> Uh, oh, my. Tony and Susan, the flowers are gorgeous in memory of your family. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's see. Uh, it's time for us to talk about ugly ties. Do any of you have ugly ties on? Come on, John. You do. You do. We will be accepting contributions until the uh, in the office. Miss Linda Powers has decided to uh, help us out until Tuesday, and after that, that's the cutoff date. Um, the leading group right now is the eleven o'clock service, which is my service. <laughs> so if y'all want the eleven o'clock to win, just don't vote. But I'm sure everybody would like to have their um, their service represented. I think we have one member here, or actually two, I think, Chap, are you out there somewhere? Oh, there he is in the back. If y'all would um, open up your wallets and checkbooks so you can represent your um, service. Um, like I said, 11 o'clock is uh, winning. So if y'all want the uh, 11 o'clock to win... Just maintain what you're doing. I'm out there in the hallway accepting um, cash or checks. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. John Walker, Methodist Men's President Extraordinaire. Thank you. Thank you. You know, this is just a game that we're playing, having a little fun, raising money for our youth scholarships. It's one of the many ways that our church uh, says to our youth, we love you, uh, we believe in you, and, and we support you. So that's a lovely thing. Uh, let's see. Now, Scott Stewart has a word to say about the sabbatical clergy renewal leave that the church has granted to me. Scott? Good morning. Uh, a little bit about the ugly tie contest. I did this in the 8 o'clock service as well. Uh, I was a school teacher for 15 years in the middle school, and so I would start every class with an explanation of my tie, because I wore a tie every day. And so 
of course, you know, that's how I got each of my four to six classes a day started, and, and the kids would start getting comfortable with me with my tie story. And so then I started getting gifts of ties from all of my students because they wanted their name mentioned in each of my classes. So, and I would do that for years and years, and so I have a garbage bag full of ties. That, as you can see, I've kind of gotten away from the tie thing. <laughs> So I have a garbage, so I told all the Methodist men, oh, I'm going to win this contest easily. I have a whole bag full of ties. Well, for, I didn't want to disrespect all the students that gave me those <laughs> wonderful ties, so I actually put one of my, uh, my ugliest ties out there that I purchased myself a long time ago. <laughs> but uh, I do have some ugly ties. In the thing. So um, good morning. I'm your lay leader here at Duck Church, and I'm here to share with you uh, our church's plan to give Pastor John a sabbatical or clergy renewal leave. It's, it's from April 17th through June 28th. The United Methodist Book of Discipline provides clergy renewal leave for pastors who have served the church for six of more years. Many of you know Pastor John has served this church faithfully for eight years, and he's a little overdue for his leave. This leave was suggested by our bishop, to pastors in our district last fall. It was approved by the district superintendent in October, approved by the staff parish relations committee in November, and it was introduced to the administrative council in January and approved in our regular meeting this past Monday night. You ask what sabbaticals are all about. The root of the word sabbatical comes from Sabbath, and it comes from the Old Testament command from God to rest every seventh day, the Sabbath, and to rest every seventh year. The United Methodist Church has learned that its clergy are healthier, more effective, if they observe these rhythms of work and rest. This is why the Book of Discipline sub subscribes that sabbatical clergy leave uh, every six years and uh, why Bishop Ward is specifically asking clergy who are eligible for this leave to take it. Several of our area Methodist clergy have taken this leave in the past few years, such as Alan Schwartz, uh, the Kitty Hawk preacher, and Teresa Hollowell from Collington. Our district superintendent, who's, who has just returned from two weeks of vacation, will take his sabbatical in March this summer. Bishop Ward and our district superintendent have assisted in securing a really great roster of preachers while Pastor John is away. This roster kicks off with our district superintendent, Reverend Gil Wise, preaching. It also includes pastors from Duke, as well as Dean of Duke Divinity School, a missionary who works with Duck Church's mission in Sierra Leone, a missionary who works in the southern jurisdiction of the United Methodist Conference on Relief, Pastor Emeritus, Emeritus, David Clift, who I had to look up that word because I didn't know what Emeritus meant, but it means that he is retired but still maintains his, his pastoral uh, certificate. So David Clift will be joining us. Dr. Laura Early from All God's Children. There will even be an inspiring Sunday with our own Cole Bright. We believe we will really enjoy these preachers and, won't, and, and want, won't want to miss a single one. We're calling this the Distinguished Preachers Series and will soon have flyers for you to enjoy and to share with your neighbors. Other than the regular amounts budgeted each year for the pastor's travel and continuing education, the additional estimated cost for the church is $3,000. This will help defray the cost of, for the visiting preachers uh, when they come here. Pastor Amy will provide pastoral care during that time. Amy has uh, many years of pastoral experience attending to the needs of the youth and the youth's families. And over a decade, she has served or provided pastoral care uh, while our senior pastor is away on vacation. What will Pastor John do while he was on leave? During this time, it is his job to rest and to unplug completely from the work of the ministry. He will not be answering his phone, 
nor his emails. He will be spending more time in prayer, in study, and more time with his family. He'll attend a continuing education seminar in Nashville, visit his grandchildren in Boston, attend John Jr.'s graduation from UNC, and his own graduation from Duke University. He will continue working on a book he is writing about faith. He may travel to a new biblical or church site, but has not yet been determined. Elizabeth's mother left her a little money, and the Tysons will be enjoying using that for a trip to Europe for two or three weeks. This will be a time of blessing, enjoyment, and strength for both our congregation and our pastor. And when Pastor John returns, he'll be charged and ready to go and better than ever. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to contact Chip Vincent, our SPRC chair, Barry Bright, our administrative council chair, or myself, and I'll be glad to answer any of your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. I appreciate that. Uh, I want to thank the congregation for your support. Nobody likes it when people go on sabbatical. Can I get an amen? Yeah, it's like when people go on sabbatical, it's like, or a long vacation, it's kind of like, oh, you know, what are we going to do while you're gone? We like having you here. We need you. And so everybody just sort of holds their breath until the staff person's vacation is over or until the sabbatical is over. So thank you for enduring the pain of my being away. For some of you, it may be a pleasure, but those of you that it's a pain for, thank you for enduring that. Thank you for praying for me. And uh, I, I think that it uh, will be a blessing uh, to both me and in turn to you. I think my leadership will, will improve from rest and perspective. I think that's the idea that the Methodist Church has in recommending these. So thank you. Now, who would you like for us to remember in prayer today? Is there anybody on this side? Jesse, thank you. Thank you. Yes, Don? Uh, my grandson's in the park. Thank you. Who else on this side? Anybody? Lois Green. Lois Green, thank you. Scott? Uh, my aunt, Shirley Graham, and me, and Tessa. Thank you. Thank you. Others on this side? How about from this side, anyone? Yes. Thanks, Cindy. Yes. Sarah. Thank you, Trey. Anyone else on this side? How about from the choir? Starting on this end. Alex, thank you. Our country. Our country, thank you. Lou Gregory and Paul Ford. Lou Gregory and Paul Ford. Your Aunt Mildred Gardner. Let's bow in prayer. Oh, Father, we thank you for your great love that surrounds and blesses us at every moment of our lives. When you knit us together in our mother's wombs and you bless us on our way, when you bring us to faith as teenagers at confirmation time, when you bring us later in life to times that it's, it's time for us to let go of this life and embrace the world to come, we thank you for all of these blessings. We pray for those whose names have been called. They, they need a special touch from you. They're in need and in crisis, and we lift them up in tenderness to your fatherly love. Surround and bless them, we pray, with your Holy Spirit. Let healing grace and power be upon their minds and bodies and souls. And bless each of us, Lord, if you can use us to help these people, show us the way and empower us to do it. Now we ask, give us grace, Lord, that we might glorify your name. For we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Today we're talking a lot about faith and we're talking about the, the righteousness that comes from Jesus Christ, not from dead, empty forms of ritual. And so I thought, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness would be awfully good. 368.
you may be seated. I invite you to turn into your bulletin to the prayer of confession as we confess our sins to Almighty God. Let us pray. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please continue in silent confession. O Lord, we beseech thee, absolve thy people from their offenses that through thy bountiful goodness we may be delivered from the bonds of those sins which by our frailty we have committed. Grant this, O Heavenly Father, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our blessed Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We have a video from the confirmation weekend that we had at Camp Donnelly. I invite you to enjoy that now. I really think I've been challenged to share with others what Jesus and God are really about. Hi, I'm Foster, and basically through confirmation, God has called me to many things. Like last night, I was walking down the pier, and the waves started to slap up against the side, and I thought it was God saying, go further, go to my cross. Before, I've accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior, but I have not gone public with it, so I'm really excited to finally announce that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and that I will put everything I have into my church. Hi, I'm Kate, and during confirmation, my faith and knowledge has grown tremendously, and today I'm really excited to be baptized for the first time. Hi, my name's Sammy, and so through the confirmation retreat, I feel like God's been calling me to spread his love and spread his word and follow him further and kind of get up in front of people and declare that I follow him and I'm his child and yeah. <laughs> Man, you did such a beautiful job with that. You are mighty witnesses. Hoorah. That is wonderful. Way to go. We come now to the time for the offerings. We thank you for the wonderful ways that you support this and all the ministries of Duck Church. If the ushers will come forward, we'll receive the morning tithes and offerings.
ugly tie. <laughs> Father, we yield our entire selves to you. We make of ourselves a living sacrifice and pray that you might receive us and use us any way that you will. In symbol of this, we offer these gifts to you. We pray that you would glorify yourself through them, that your good news of eternal life in Jesus 
might be shared here on the beach and throughout the world to the glory of his name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I invite you to exchange signs of love and peace with one another. be seated. I invite the confirmands to come up now as you turn in your hymnal to number 33. As you come up, confirmands, I have a question for you. What is a sacrament? Come on. You are so good. Say that again. Yes, that is beautiful. And we are about to experience one of the sacraments in just a moment, aren't we? Praise the Lord. Okay. Pastor Amy, introduce these folks. I present to you for baptism, Kate Hamilton. For confirmation, Foster Guns. For confirmation, Sydney Guns. For confirmation, Maggie McNitch. For confirmation, Anna Parsons. For confirmation, Sammy Stewart. And for confirmation, Abby Wallace. Confirmands, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If you do, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If you do, say, I do. 
Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior? Put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. If so, say, I do. Parents and mentors, will you nurture these children in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves, to profess their faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? If so, say, I will. Confirmands, according to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? If so, say, I will. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? This is everybody. Say, we do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include these persons now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with the community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in a way that leads to life. Our confirmands have asked if they could uh, recite the Apostles' Creed for you, so instead of all of us saying it together, they're going to recite it for us. So, y'all turn around and do it loud and proud. Ready? Three, two, one. now to the time for the thanksgiving over the water and we're going to use this uh, baptismal water in two ways uh, we're going to baptize Kate and the others of you have been baptized before many of you as infants and you will remember your baptism so uh, we remember that water is a sign of cleansing it's a sign of life it's a symbol of our being immersed in the Holy Spirit. Jesus is the one that gives us this grace. So hear the sound of the water. See it pour. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord of the earth. Sing to the Lord of the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus. Nurtured in the water of a womb, he was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his works to the nations. Declare his works to the nations. His glory among all the people. His glory among all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless this gift of water 
and those who receive it, to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ. All praise to you, eternal Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen, 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 amen. I invite you to kneel. Yes. We want to invite the parents to come forward and stand behind their confirmands. And then we'd love to invite um, the mentors to come and stand behind them, please. Kate, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for blessing Kate with your grace. We thank you that this water is a symbol of what you're doing in her heart, secretly, invisibly. She can feel it. She knows your grace and presence, and it is shining through her life. Oh, Lord, we pray that you make her a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Be with her every day of her life in this world and in the world to come. In Jesus' name. Foster, feel this water and remember your baptism. O oh Lord, as Foster comes to you to profess her faith before this congregation, we remember that you said, if anyone confesses me before men, I will confess them before my Father in heaven. Thank you that today that promise is sealed. We pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will flower in her life, bringing her to the beauty of a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Bless her, O Lord, in this world and in the next with eternal life. Sydney, feel this water and remember your baptism. This water which you feel is a reminder that you have been accepted by God, owned by him as his child. This gracious relationship is a gift to you through the blood of Jesus Christ who gave his life on the cross so that you might be saved. Saved not only from the guilt of sin, but from the power of it, that you might be a true disciple of Jesus Christ all your days. Oh, Lord, we pray that you bless her. We pray that you cause her to walk with you. And when the way becomes bewildering, we thank you that you will lead her and guide her, both in this life and in the world to come for eternal life. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Maggie, as you feel this water, remember the waters of baptism, which are a symbol of your being immersed in the spirit of God. We pray that once again the power of the Holy Spirit would wash across your mind and soul and bodies in ways that you will never forget. Thank you, O Lord, for this blessing, for what you are doing in her soul, which is invisible, but which can be seen by all of those around. O Lord, we pray that you bless your daughter. Let her faith grow brighter and stronger. Let her be a true disciple of Jesus all the days of her life in this world and in the life to come. Anna, feel these waters of baptism and remember that you have been claimed as a child of God. He will never let you go, but will embrace you with arms of love throughout your whole life. We pray, O oh Lord, that you so fill your child with your grace, with your spiritual power, with your heavenly benediction, that all who really know her will see Jesus living in her. O oh Lord, we pray that you make your call upon her clear as she follows you through every day of this life. Bless her in this life and in the world to come with eternal life. In Jesus' name. Thank you for the spiritual power in this moment. We thank you for those in the heavenly realm who rejoice at this day. We thank you for the citizens of your kingdom on earth who rejoice at this day. We pray your grace and power upon Sammy. We pray that you take him by the hand and lead him. We thank you for your love that has surrounded and blessed him since he was knit together in his mother's womb. We thank you for the way the church has surrounded and blessed and nurtured him. We thank you that he is a part of this great body of Christ. And we bless your name for what you shall do through this strong son of yours. Grant that he might bless and glorify the name of Jesus every day of his life and that finally you might bring him to the heavenly realm and that he might hear you say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Amen. Abby, feel these waters of baptism and remember that you have been born again by the power and agency of the Holy Spirit, born of the flesh and born of the Spirit. Heavenly Father, we pray that on this day you let Abby's spirit soar into the heavens. And that this will be a moment that she and her family remember for eternity. Grant, O oh Lord, that her beauty and grace 
might be not only physical but spiritual, that all who see and know her might see Jesus in her. We pray, O Lord, that you make her way clean and clear and straight. We pray that she might follow you all the days of her life and that you would give her the gift of eternal life. We thank you for this life and the world to come and the church that has nurtured her all these years and will continue to. In Jesus' name. may rise. Confirmands, as members of Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, say, I will. As members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. If so, say, I will. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. All members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. The God of all grace who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit that you may live in grace and peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. There's water on my Bible. It traveled a long way. The scripture comes from Philippians chapter 3, beginning with verse 8. I need to tell you that it's 1025. We're going to go over, just so you know. Not by a lot, but by some. Philippians chapter 3 Beginning with verse 1, Finally, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. Beware of the dogs. Beware of the evil workers. Beware of those who mutilate the flesh. For it is we who are the circumcision, who worship in the Spirit of God and boast in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh, even though I too have reason for this confidence in the flesh. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death if somehow I may obtain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. 
Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature be of the same mind. And if you think differently about anything, this too God will reveal to you. Only let us hold fast to what we have attained. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. When Paul writes this letter to the Philippian church, the church at this time is undergoing a huge turmoil. This is not that unusual for the church. As we grow, we go through turmoil. At that time, the turmoil of the church was about whether you had to become a Jew before you came to become a Christian. That sounds strange to us today, doesn't it? But the early church, you remember Jesus was a Jew. He's the Jewish Messiah. All his disciples were Jews. And so the very beginnings of Christianity were with Jewish people that believed in Jesus. And so they assumed that when people that weren't Jewish became Christians, they would become Jewish first. Well, that's not really the way of it, is it? Otherwise, you and I would all be Jews, wouldn't we? That's not the way this worked out. Paul said, no, 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 you don't need to become a Jew to be a Christian. You don't need the ceremonies of Judaism to love God. Now, Paul was really good at the ceremonies of Judaism because you remember, Paul was a Pharisee. Now, there were only about 6,000 Pharisees in all of Judaism at this time. And there were over a million Jews. Can you hear how few Pharisees there were? 6,000 Pharisees in a population of over a million? It was a big deal to be a Pharisee. These Pharisees memorized the first five books of the Bible. And I don't know if you've read the first five books of the Bible lately, but there are a lot of ceremonial laws in there, and they tried to do them all, all the ceremonial laws. In fact, they became so tied up in the ceremonial law that sometimes they forgot about the real spirit of Jesus living in our hearts, the spirit of God living in our hearts that Jesus expressed in the great two commandments. If you want to know what the greatest commandments are, the first one is love God above all and love your neighbors yourself. Now, these Christians that Paul was talking about, they meant well. They meant well. This is one of the things that happens in the church. Sometimes people get focused on whatever they're interested in, and they forget about the first commandment is to love God, and the second is to love your neighbors yourself. These Jewish Christians were so focused on the importance of circumcision that they were tearing up the church over it. Sometimes well-meaning people get so focused on something that they tear up the church out of their desire to hold on to their own ideas. That's immature. Now, there's nothing wrong with being immature. Babies are immature, and we expect them to be. But we follow in the church those who are mature. And the way we recognize maturity is not by how many scriptures can be quoted. The Pharisees could quote a lot of scripture. Not by how good people's prayers sound. The Pharisees were very good at praying long prayers that sounded wonderful. But the way you can tell who's spiritually mature is by their love. You know that, that song, we'll know they are Christians by their love? We'll know they are Christians by their love. Love of God and love of neighbor. 
That is what identifies a mature Christian. Now, confirmands, you've just joined the church. I want to tell you that in the church, you're going to feel so much nurture, so much grace. You've already felt that, haven't you? Confirmands felt a lot of nurture and grace from the church, and you're going to. But sometimes in the church, we can get it wrong. A great example is these screens. The screens, they look normal to you because they've been here as long as you've been coming to church. We installed these screens about eight years ago. Um, some people got so upset when they heard we were going to install screens, it was a scream. People would call me and they would say, Preacher, I heard that you're going to install screens in the church and you're going to take out the altar. No, we're, we're not going to take out the altar. We need that altar. We're not moving that off. Well, that's not what I heard, and I think you're a liar. Well, if you think I'm a liar, then me explaining things to you is not going to help because you think I'm lying to you. But there you go. All I can say is wait till the screens are installed, and then you'll see that the altar hasn't gone anywhere. Then my phone rings again. Preacher, I heard you were going to install giant screens that were going to completely block out the windows. No, no, we're not going to do that. Uh, we're going to install the screens on the side. You'll still be able to see out the window. No problem. Well, that's not what I heard, and I think you're lying. Well, if you think I'm lying, then it's not going to help for me to explain differently to you, but wait till they're installed in about three more weeks, and you'll see that they're not obscuring the windows. We still have people who will not attend church because these screens were installed eight years ago unless i'm away or on vacation while i'm on sabbatical they'll come back that is not mature christian love but that's the way sometimes people act in church and in a way it's okay i gotta tell you We hold our religious ideas very dearly, and when they're threatened, it upsets us. Sometimes we're all that way. And so when other people get upset, maybe because the youth are playing hide and seek in the church, can I get an amen? Yeah. Sometimes when people get upset because they think something's happening in a church that they don't think would be pleasing to God, they don't realize that their attitude that's not loving is not spiritually mature. But the way we test spiritual maturity is by loving kindness. There are an awful lot of spiritually mature people in this church that you have experienced loving kindness from and that you will continue to. And I have a little secret for you even the most spiritually mature of us have a temper tantrum once in a while. Amen? <laughs> That's the way families are. So you're in the family of God. And in the family of God, we experience the love of our Heavenly Father. We experience the love of our brothers and sisters. And once in a while, maybe somebody says something to us and we say, Wow, why did you say that? It's because they're human, just like you and me. Sound good? Amen, amen. So as we think about this together, we know that the church is a human and divine institution. It's full of people like you and me. None of us are perfect, and yet we love the Lord and it shows in the most glorious ways. We're part of a big human family. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The closing hymn is number 295, In the Cross of Christ I Glory. Let's stand and sing.
Debbie Bright just gave me a message to ask that we not use this door to exit, but rather that we use the front door, or if that line seems a little long, you can use this side door here. Now receive this benediction. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the throne of grace with exceeding joy, unto the only wise God be honor, glory, dominion, and power, and may the love of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and forever. Amen.